All right, so the Innovative Pro traction bar comes with a little bag of hardware, two radius arms, and the new designed actual traction bar there. And what's different is this one's got a actual lift spot for it. It's a bit heavy. I don't have anything to do the weight by it, but uh, two hooks integrated. It's gonna bolt to the original spot there. All right, so let's remove the old one. All right, so my engine's out of the car. It's a little easier and different for me, but so here's your radius rod that it's gonna be replacing. Here's the actual bar that's gonna be replacing. So there's a ton of ways you can do it. I'm gonna remove the actual bolt here, move the fork a little bit, and then I'm gonna take these two out. They are all 17 millimeters. go I'm gonna put the nut with the bolt so I don't lose it all right so looking underneath it so looking underneath if here's the center you follow the radius rod then you're gonna have two one two then you're gonna have the same thing one two both sides take those out now when you take those out the actual whole cross member is going to come down so if anything, maybe you can loosen those, put a jack underneath it, or whatever your so choice may be. I'm going to loosen them and put a jack underneath it. There you go. Cross member's now out of the car. All right, after the cross member's out, you're gonna have your OEM tow hook here. It's gonna have three 14s. All right, so as I was removing the passenger side, you can see two bolts are out and the third one's still here. So there's a nut inside of there. Obviously my nut broke loose on the inside. So you can just try to stick a pry bar or anything. Just, you gotta put kind of tension on it. You want some tension on the actual washer, which will cause tension on the head, which will kind of tighten everything up as you try to remove this. So I'm gonna gently take the actual toke and pull towards me. You notice it already came out more now. Still not out all the way. There you go. And now my nut is kind of loose inside there, but the tow hook is off. So here's the original bolt you pulled out of the cross member. This should be, there was two on the left side, two on the right side, driver, passenger side. You're gonna reuse these to put the cross member back up. You can either lift the cross member back up with a jack um, and then slide them in, hand tighten them at first. It's not very heavy, so I'm just gonna pick it up by hand and just throw these bolts up in it. So you should be able to see it from this angle now. These aren't quite yet there to line up. And if you see, it's hitting right here. Just kind of nicking it. Nothing to do with the bolt clearance or anything. This side... Looks like it's also going to hit just ever so gently. So... Uh, I'm assuming the bar goes up this way for clearance. I tried flipping it too, it doesn't seem to matter. But So it looks like probably from this side on, all the way around to at least to 12 o'clock on the head here. Should probably need to be cut down just a tad. So well, that's what we're gonna end up having to do. All right, so here's the innovative bar on the bottom and the original bar on the top. I kind of just stuck, stuck hardware that came with the innovative bar through the top. As you can kind of see, it's a little bit different of a shape, which wouldn't play much of a role maybe, but because it's so much thicker, it ends up hitting, at least in my case, it's hitting all around up here. I'll show you a clip of where it's hitting. So it looks like I'm gonna have to end up grinding around this bar to get it to actually to fit should be able to see the hole, how it's off here, just by a tad, not by a ton, but it's off. There's your back hole, it's still off. And if you look, I mean, it's hitting right there. And it's also hitting On the front there there's no way it would fit is it hitting the sway bar end link 
No, it's got some clearance there. It's close to maybe hitting the actual sway bar. Um, it's close. So I've got a Skunk 2 Ultra Street Manifold, and I didn't have a fuel rail. Again, just personal preference, I decided to go with their fuel rail, figured it bolt onto their manifold nice. And again, when I bought this motor, I didn't have a lot of parts whatsoever, except for like a block and a head. So I had to buy pieces. I could have bought OEM replacements, could have went to a junkyard, whatever the case is, but due to circumstances, that's what I ended up doing. So these are just some refurb 240 CC injectors that I bought. Um, so something that I noticed as I was going to install it, I did notice the parts kit, for the fuel rail, it comes with such hardware. It looks like some spacers, uh, three long bolts, two short bolts, and then it had four O-rings. So I did try sticking some light motor oil, fresh motor oil. Not a lot, just a little bit. On the outside of the O-ring, and then even the little grommet that's gonna sit inside the actual manifold. But I could not for the life of me get it in there and in fact it looks like the o-ring is going to sort of walk itself off so i decided to stick one of the o-rings that came with the kit on and lo and behold it went in like a glove so all right so i'm happy i test fitted those o-rings first i didn't have to just force anything so now i just stuck the injectors the grommets lubed again lightly down into the manifold check the fuel rail it's going to facing you there you go, once it's kind of on, I'm trying to push it all the way down. You could put these in first, I guess, if you wanted. Grab the three longer screws and the three spacers. It's pretty self explanatory where they're going to go. I am going to keep those O-rings that came on the injectors just in case this does leak. But I won't know until I fire the car up. So other than that now, just tighten these down. All right, so the aeromotive screws are a tad bit longer than those Skunk 2 screws that came with it. Be able to see that. Not by much. I'm going to go with the aeromotive screws. These Skunk 2 screws that have been connecting the plenum to the runners have been kind of rusting. I mean, I'm just replacing all those with stainless hardware at a later date, but that's near here or there. Um, took the screw out that's in the front of the air motive for now. I'm going to put a gauge into it. Came with a little O-ring. I put the O-ring in there. I'm going to screw one of the screws that came with the air motive in already because if you look, the air motive's got uh, little slots, so I can just kind of slide it in the side there. Make sure the O-ring stays seated. Now I can screw the other one in. Or try to. This is a five millimeter Allen. All right. I'm gonna take my gauge. I just got a uh, this random little Marshall water filled gauge. It's black, I'll be honest. I was kind of going on a little bit on the side of trying to keep some color here. At least with the alternating tan, black. So there it is. For the most part, there's the intake manifold ready to go. I am running a tux kit over here, so that's gonna change. Got fittings for both ends now to attack the stuff in the back of the manifold. All right, now we're placing the GPS in there. You can see there's a little groove here, like a little, uh, just a little channel nonetheless. When the throttle body, if I can find it, when the throttle body moves, see it moving. So, when that moves, this little groove here, this little tang needs to be riding in that. So as the throttle body opens, this 
moves as well, changing the value of the sensor, sending it to the computer. So, I'm just going to take the little gasket that's supplied with it, lay it over it. If you want to see if it's in there, you can kind of, you notice I just rotated it. And it lets go back. So I'm going to let that sit there. Take the two supplied screws. It's got a washer and a lock nut. Now at a later date, I will be setting this. But I'm going to need power and whatnot hooked up, which I don't have at the moment. So I'm installing it. Again, this is just going to help get things off the garage floor. It's easier to do it right here than it would be later on as well. And now my, throw, my TPS is on temporarily. No paint chipping, no nothing. Um, the paint that I use in the valve cover too, it's going to be probably hard to tell in this light, but just take me for what it's worth, or take my word. <laughs> the tow hooks I took them off there, I sprayed them, and then I clear coated them with the stuff from Automotive Touch-Up, and it, it blends in well. You can't even... That's not helping. Maybe then I'll let me show you. It came out great. I mean, you can barely see a line where it's at. Pretty happy with the color. So, and now looking at the motor side by side, it's going to work. Now, I sprayed up in here with the HT roll bar spray paint just to kind of freshen it up. Now, I think what I'm going to do is Skunk 2 is having their sale. So, I'm going to order their Pro 2 camber kit now. I haven't decided if I'm going to order their lower control arm or not or just replace the bushings. For time's sake and everything, it might just be nicer just to buy their lower control arm. I know it's basically an OEM replacement. Um, so maybe I'll do all that at once, put the suspension in at once, finish the Valex racing line that I already started up there, and I will spray the knuckle with the same paint here and spray the caliper the same color. Just kind of freshen them up because I've got brand new Brembo pads and Brembo rotors for it. I just, again, each week is something, I run into something small like the innovative bars but maybe that was a blessing in disguise because now i'll take all the suspension off and put it all on at once and uh yeah so i did jack it up too with three um three two by fours three two by fours in this three ton jacket gets high enough that i should be able to push the motor underneath i can't push it underneath with the actual dolly that it's on but a creeper it should be able to fit so if anything next week if all the parts come in well i should at least be able to mount the transmission to it put on the creeper and hopefully throw this bad girl inside of here already and we can make progress on it so again this video is a little different than usual it's because i ran into a ton of hiccups but nonetheless she is growing and moving here so all right so everyone that has subscribed followed commented whatever the case is that enjoys watching a build greatly appreciate you i enjoy watching builds myself which is kind of the reason i started doing this um so because of that i greatly thank you all hopefully next weekend there's no hiccups and i can maybe get the motor into the car and after that i've got a shit ton of wiring to deal with but i'm pretty sure i have everything for that pretty sure i think i've checked my boxes and that's all here so again thank you for watching everyone and uh have a good weekend